I've just heard the news that the legendary saxophone player Wayne Shorter has died at the age of 89. This is another legend leaving us. It seems that we're going through a period now with a lot of the great legendary musicians that I grew up with that were really, you know, at the peak are, are getting to that age now where they're passing on. And so we have the news that another absolute legend has gone, uh, Wayne Shorter. So um, I can't get to my studio, so I've jumped onto my laptop to film this video. I wanted to get a tribute done. Um, while it's all fresh in my mind, unprepared to really try and capture my reaction to hearing this news. Um, Wayne Shorter came to prominence in the late 50s, early 60s in the Art Blakey Band. As a musician, he represents the bridge between bebop, post-bebop, hard bop, jazz, free jazz, and then jazz fusion. Um, and he seems a giant in all three of those areas. Um, after leaving Art Blakey's band in the early 60s, early to mid 60s, he joined Miles Davis's classic uh, quintet. This is one of the greatest um, jazz groups in history. Uh, it featured Miles on trumpet, Wayne on saxophone, um, Tony Williams on drums, Ron Carter on bass, Herbie Hancock on piano. Uh, during this period, Wayne Shorter contributed a number of incredible compositions. I would say throughout the 60s that Wayne Shorter was one of the most important jazz composers working at that time. Um, his um, creation of these compositions, his absolute jazz standards, and also his work in Miles Davis's quintet would have made him an immortal legend. Um, he's also recorded a number of solo albums through that period. Uh, an album that is very relevant to this channel is the album Supernova, which sort of um, explores a sort of free jazz, post Coltrane, post Ornette Coleman um, type of improvisation. And he's very important in the development of jazz fusion. It featured John McLaughlin and Sonny Sharrock on guitar, with Sonny Sharrock really right over in the free area, and McLaughlin exploring that area between free jazz and, and early jazz rock. It's a very important album. His uh, contributions to albums like um, In a Silent Way and Bitches Brew are just seminal. This is the building blocks of jazz fusion and the building blocks of half the uh, tunes and songs and artists and albums that we cover here on this channel. But of course, that is not what he's mainly known for. With, with all of that, he was the leader of perhaps the two most important jazz fusion bands in history would be the Mavish Nuxtra and Weather Report. And he was the leader of, with Joe Zawinul, of Weather Report. Um, he uh, came into contact with Joe Zawinul while playing with Miles Davis. Joe Zawinul also performed on uh, Bitches Brew in a silent way, contributing compositions. Throughout the 70s, uh, Joe Zawinul becomes one of the most important composers. But when you put those two guys together, when you put Zawinul and Wayne Shorter together, especially when Wayne moved to soprano sax, I think there's a magical sound there that um, is, is a is just one of the seminal sounds. And Wayne Shorter and Zawinul seem to be able to improvise almost like psychically together. And through those improvisations, they created on the first um, Weather Report albums, a kind of post bitches brew ap approach to electric jazz improvisation. These albums were so important to the development of jazz. Um, a lot of the post miles Davis Bitches Brew musicians like Herbie Hancock, initially John McLaughlin and Wayne Shorter and Zawinul are exploring these areas, but they start to form into their own ways. And as as um Wayne as um Weather Report develops, we see uh, a move towards a funky type of jazz improvisation, which um where the improvisation um creates a space in in which the soloing um, happens in a really different way to what the Mavish Nuxtra are doing. So with Mavish Nuxtra, it's just full out. Everyone's just like leaping towards the horizon 
of Jazz Fusion. They're, everyone's trying to go there, and a lot of the times it's almost like everybody's playing at the same time. With Weather Report, they explore the absolute opposite. It's all about space. And as the albums develop, they very cleverly learn how to um, chart that space, to compose that space. And um, I think in terms of Jazz Fusion, Weather Report become the great arrangers of Jazz Fusion. Um, and I think the first albums, which are so, which are pretty avant-garde, pretty, you know, free in their approach, but that slow process towards black market and eventually heavy weather, which really um, is so successful. It's so commercial. It's, it's, it's one of the biggest selling jazz albums in history. And yet it's still, um, improvised jazz fusion of the highest order but that really great lays the groundwork for then what we see is becoming fusac um and weather report never um fell into the trap of writing fusac even though they could, they could write very commercial hooks and so wayne shorter in the, in the period i've just described has traversed everything from hard bop to free jazz to time no changes to electric avant-garde jazz fusion to tight orchestrated jazz fusion that sells millions of albums this is an incredible career weather up weather report carry on through the uh, 1980s eventually dissolving in 1986 on the last album you could see that the the relationship between zawa and and wayne shorter doesn't seem to be working um after that and, and Wayne Shorter then goes into a number of solo um projects right up into this day and I think his uh his group has been a training ground and um a place for a really interesting exploration of modern jazz and he's been cutting edge right up until now and he's one of those guys who didn't think was going to go. You know, I was aware he was very old. I was aware he was going to be 90 this year. Um, and it, I mean, 89, 90, it's, it's a hell of an age. But yeah, just heard the news that Wayne Shorter is now gone. He's, he's passed on. Um, I grew up with these bands. And for me, Weather Report and the Mavish Nuxture, the one of the two most important bands. I own every single Weather Report album, every single one. Um, I know them all absolutely inside out. And for all the incredible musicians on those albums, from Narada Michael Walden to Chester Thompson to Jaco Pastorius to Alfonso Johnson to Peter Erskine to Omar Hakim and Victor Bailey and all those incredible players, sometimes you take for granted that the the real lead sound of that band was Wayne Shorter's incredible approach. And what can we say about the way he played? Um, he described himself as one of the egg scramblers. You know, when a lot of the musicians were playing um, free jazz, you know, somebody said about Coltrane, you know, uh, uh, it, it sounds like scrambled eggs. And I think somebody said, yeah, but it's the way he's scrambling those eggs. Wayne Shorter comes out of that school. He, 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 is, he, he is not a changes player. I'm sure he could do it. Um, but he wasn't a chord changes player. He really was a free jazz player. Um, and he explores space in a way that Coltrane doesn't. In my mind, I always saw Wayne Shorter as being hands in hand, hand in hand with Coltrane, but like the yin to Coltrane's yang, a musician that was exploring the same areas, but was far more interested in a sort of introverted stepping back and, and finding a space within the music and not showboating, but just just doing the right amount. You know, I think there's a quote about Duke Ellington that it took him where he said he took him a long time to learn what to miss out. And Wayne Shorter was an absolute genius of knowing what to miss out. I think that was and, and also the tone. The incredible tone on tenor and and soprano sax, a tone where you instantly recognise um, who who that is, a tone where um, the 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 clarity. Uh, um, unlike my camera, that's just decided to hello, has <laughs> decided to completely go out of a focus as I say the word clarity. 
Um, but yeah, uh, uh, I always felt that um, Wayne Shorter articulated every single note and he gave thought to every note. When you watch him play, he's one of those players that can burn. He can play with so much heat, but still he is in under control and there's a thought process going on of, and you're aware of him deciding and not wasting one note. And this is a guy that could play very beautiful melodic lines, but it could also play pure noise as well. He, he was just such an incredible musician. And of course, with these incredible legendary musicians, you take for granted everything they've done until they're gone. We're moving on into another realm. The uh, era of postmodernism, the era of individual expression, the era, era of music where people sat and listened to music and would sell millions of albums to sit in their house and put on an album like Heavy Weather and get engrossed in the beauty of that album. That It's as though that door is closing. And every time I hear that one of these legends has passed on, I feel, God, you know, we, we're on our own. The children of all this, you know, and I think we have to remember what this guy's done. You know, we've got to remember what Jeff Beck's done. We've got to remember what Chickory has done. And we really need to try and take this legacy forward if we can. Um, Wayne Shorter, 1933 to 2023. Literally one of the greatest jazz musicians in history. Thanks for the music, Wayne. Thank for what, thanks for watching. I'm sorry if I was a bit tongue-tied. Uh, I, I, I really like to try and just get the initial thoughts out. And, and later on, I'm sure I'm going to do a big re retrospective of Wayne Shorter's career. Um, but for now, you know, let's remember the guy and uh, what a musician. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you like the video, like. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.